Hello everyone, my name is Protesilos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to talk to you about a feature of Emacs that I feel does not get the attention and recognition it deserves. And this is the ability to customize the various variables that are exposed to Emacs using a graphical interface. I want to tour you around uh, this interface and explain how it can be very useful even if you don't plan to rely on it for the various changes that you make to your Emacs uh, configuration file. Uh, I want to switch to my Emacs window and uh, before I start I just want to activate a screen key. So let's check. Okay, now you can see my key presses. I will try to use the default uh, key bindings so that you can follow along. Even though, strictly speaking, uh, these are not necessary, but uh, to keep uh, with the spirit of the demo. Let's go straight to the point, mx customize return. This will offer you an overview of the various groups of uh, customizations that you can uh, access. Uh, and you can use uh, key uh, the, the keyboard, the standard uh, keyboard motions, or the mouse. I prefer to use the mouse for the purpose of this demo. Let's go to this thing over here. You can read about the various variables that are here. You can read more about them, what they do. You can toggle it uh, on or off. Let's uh, come here, expand this, and let's tweak it a bit to our liking. Let's do the same with this one over here. Uh, let's do this as well. Uh, don't repeat. And let's uh, save our changes. If we were to just apply, it would evaluate the new uh, configurations and these would be in effect for the running session. But as soon as you were to close Emacs and relaunch it again, they would be lost. So if you want to store them for future sessions, you have to apply and save. Apply and save, it will ask you for confirmation. We do just that. When you, do, uh, when you perform a save, uh, these will be added to the snippet of code that is typically appended to your uh, init file. Uh, because I have uh, tweaked it to my liking, uh, these are placed in a separate file called custom.el. Uh, so let's go to that uh, file and have a look. I think I have it. No, I don't have it. Uh, I don't have a buffer. So let's uh, go to my Emacs D and here is the file. So this is the snippet of code uh, that is, uh, as I said, either appended to your init file or placed in a separate file uh, if you choose uh, to do so. So I see here the things that I have uh, just uh, stored. It's uh, this one over here, the other one over there and this one is a bit further below. I'm not sure why it was placed over there. But anyhow, let's not worry about that. If we were to just leave it as it is, these will apply uh, to our Emacs uh, sessions uh, until we choose uh, to tweak them. So they work uh, right away out of the box. So if you don't want to maintain your own uh, Emacs uh, configuration, you can just use MX Customize and the various uh, subcommands to uh, tweak things to your liking. But if you are like me, that you store your uh, customization file, you maintain your own customization file and you store it with a Git and you share it online with other people, you probably don't want this. You don't want to share this thing with the public. It's too noisy and uh, too much irrelevant information. What you probably want to do is you want to cherry pick uh, the things that you customize and then place them in your own init file. So let's do just that. Let's come uh, over here. Let's let screen key clear and I have a new section testing uh, things. And let's open uh, an Emacs uh, Lisp uh, snippet and uh, let's come here um, and we want, oh sorry, we want uh, this thing over here. We want that one over there and uh, then we want also, what do we want? We want those two, right? So we want those two as well. Let's remove those from there and uh, let's place them over here. Uh, so we have this over there as it is. Let's remove that thing for a minute and let's do this thing here so that I can show you something. So. 
If you see the way uh, variables are uh, in defined in your own init file, you have to uh, set, uh, write set q and then uh, the variable, the variable name and its value. So we have to do the same for this thing here because it's uh, three lines. I don't want to do it for all three of them. So I, this is a good opportunity to define a simple macro. Let's do just that. Control X and uh, the left parenthesis. We go to the beginning of the line. We search for the first quote, delete it, move. Oh, sorry. I accidentally pressed uh, Control G. So I will do it again. Sorry about this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's define a macro, go to the beginning of the line, search for the quote, delete it, then go over there, oh, sorry, set Q over there, and then move to the next line, close the macro, and repeat it for two times. And this is correct. This is a valid syntax. If you were to evaluate this, it will evaluate uh, as expected and give you uh, the configurations that you want. And you can, uh, as I said, you can uh, use a git to store this, uh, share it online and things of that nature. But let's come back uh, to customize. Uh, let's now go back to the previous thing that we were. And let's remove this. So as I said, you can use uh, the generic interface to browse to uh, sections that might be of interest. But by default, this does not really look very promising because you really have to go digging. And if you are not sure what you are interested in, uh, chances are that you will waste too much time. An alternative is to use MX and then customize hyphen group return. And now you have the option to search for what you are looking for. So let me show you in, in, uh, in practice uh, something that I myself did uh, a couple of days ago. Let's search for Council. Council is a package that I have installed. It's a very popular package that, is, uh, that comes with the IV completion framework. Probably you already use this, but if not, don't worry too much about it. So I came to this thing here and I was searching for a uh, young uh, pop. Yeah, I was searching for this thing here uh, I, because I wanted to tweak it to my liking. I will explain what this thing is in a minute. So I came to this over here, over here, the council young pop separator. And I set the value, the original value is plain, the default value. And I set it to dashes. And then I stored it. So I applied and saved, went to custom L and copied it over to my uh, config as I showed uh, earlier. Let me don't do that uh, right now, but let me come right away and show you what it is. It's this thing over here. You can see this thing over here. And let me show you what this thing is. I have configured it. Uh, I will explain what this thing is in a minute. I have configured it so that now when I press meta and Y to cycle the kill ring, I have a visual representation of the things that are stored in it. So if I press Control Y, I paste a thing here, I yank a thing. If I press Meta and Y, I get, I get the kill ring and I can now either use standard motions or arrow keys or whatever, or I can search. I can search for, for example, kill Emacs and define the thing that I am interested in. And what, I, what this thing does here, what I have customized here, is the separator between the items that are stored in the kill ring. So I can see that this is one thing, this is another thing, and this is the third thing. Whereas the original is to have uh, nothing uh, at all. Let's uh, basically, let's remove these. I'm not sure if this is how you would have it. If this is the, the plane, when they say plane. Let me see, let's, let's go here. Yeah, so this is the plane. You can see how different uh, the plane is. It's not nice at all. Uh, maybe it's not that. Maybe actually the plane is just a new line. Let me check again. Where are we? Sorry. Uh, let's do this again. Okay, yeah, so this is the plane. This is the default. 
Uh, screen key is always interfering. I shouldn't be doing too many things with a mini buffer when screen key is active. But this is the plane. This is the default. It can be very difficult to tell apart uh, which uh, is which, especially if you have uh, multiple lines uh, in the kill ring. So what I did is exactly what I showed. I configured it so that I have uh, this thing over here. So uh, backslash and n uh, represents a new line and these things here are uh, the so-called m dash. Uh, an m dash, in case you don't know, on uh, GNU Linux, you can input an m dash by pressing uh, the compose key. Sorry, let's remove this. Uh, by pressing, uh, I'm doing too many things by accident, and something wrong will happen. Sorry. Uh, so m dash, you can input m dash by pressing the compose key. You have to configure that. Uh, uh, you press the compose key and then three dashes. And this produces an M dash. Whereas if you just press the dash, you can see how it does not create a continuous line as I had over there. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have my kill ring produce a line and uh, be able to uh, differentiate the items in the kill ring uh, that way. So I was able to use MX Customize, the various uh, tools, and then find that specific variable, tweak it to my liking, bring it here, and then be able to share it with a wider audience. But let me show you something that I also discussed in the previous video about uh, finding uh, features using the built-in documentation. Control H V, and then Council uh, Yank, uh, what is it? Pop, uh, and what is it? Uh, separator. Okay, so if I come here and I find what this thing is about, it is telling me now that its value is this. So this represents the new line. So when I first came here and I found this, I wasn't exactly sure how to configure this. It wasn't very intuitive. Whereas with MX customize uh, group and then council and then uh, young uh, pop uh, separator, it was much easier to find out that I could do uh, this thing here that I did. So that's the thing, that's the point with this. You can use it to uh, customize things to your liking and if you choose, if you will, you can bring this to your own init, tweak them so that they evaluate properly and then uh, be able to share them with a wider audience. And the great value of this uh, menu over here the great value is that you can find things that you didn't know existed and it's also easier to browse through the various uh, customization options whereas it would be tedious to continuously hit Control H V and then search and then uh, browse and then repeat and so on. This is much easier and this also uh, gives you one of the other great things about uh, Emacs which is the fact that everything is intrinsically linked. So you can go from this to the other one and then to something else and then uh, go over here and uh, uh, tweak this and then change to the other one and so on and so forth. And you can find all sorts of things. You can find, for example, this thing here. I had no idea that I could configure Windows, the X window system. What is this even? D&D, uh, so drag and drop. You can do drag and drop in Emacs as well. That's something I had no idea existed. I just uh, found this now. Very interesting stuff. So I guess this combined with what I showed in my previous video of using the built-in documentation offers you practically all the tools you need to discover the hidden features, if you will, the more obscure stuff that you can do with Emacs, the more uh, obscure uh, customizations that Emacs uh, offers you, and with these you can uh, configure things to your liking. That's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.